Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope everybody's okay today. We're looking at our next message for young people and for anybody else who wants to listen to these messages. <coughs> Excuse me. Try to get an itchy nose. We turn to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we may walk in there so we just pray dear Lord I just pray for this sermon that you bless it Lord I pray father that you seal it to our hearts I pray Lord that all of us would be sensing your presence and father I just pray that you be glorified and honored and I just pray that you would feed us, Father, in your name, Lord, and for your glory. That you would feed us and be with us, Lord, in your name. Amen. So we're looking at a life of good works. We looked in the first message about the grace of God. And um, this message is a life of good works. <coughs> Excuse me. John Calvin has said, sorry, John Calvin, sorry about this, John Calvin has said, everything in us, therefore, that is good, is the supernatural gift of God. And we looked in the other message about the grace of God, and it's God that's done it, he has given the gift. But once we have an understanding of the salvation by grace, uh, we need to understand that we need to do good works. But let's just go back to this salvation by grace, just to recap. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. What saves us is not what we do, it's the ransom that was in Christ. Christ was a ransom. He paid the price of sin. Sin is judgment. And you're going to be judged, but Christ took your judgment. He was your ransom. It says on the ninth hour, Jesus Christ cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachai, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27:46. When Jesus was on the cross and he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At that point, the wrath of the Father fell upon him and he was being punished for your sin so that you may be saved. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, By making peace through his blood shed on the cross. It's the cross that saved you. It's the cross that brings peace with God. I told you the story before of a five-year-old girl. She got lost and she met a policeman and she said, I'm lost. And the policeman said, where do you live? And she couldn't remember where she lived. And the policeman said, uh, the, the girl said, but I lived near a church with a great big cross. So the policeman found the, the church with a great big cross and he was able from there to lo locate where the girl had lived. But he, they found their way home because of the cross and if you want salvation it's through the cross it's not by yourself it's by what Jesus has done to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood Revelations 1 5 now that's the gospel of grace the gospel of salvation okay that is the foundation of the Christian message, the Christian faith. That's what sets it apart from all the other religions, is that we are saved by grace, not by works. Now, there are two heresies. 
Um, there is the heresy that was saved by works. That is, by what you do saves you. Now, we've clearly seen in the first message that we're not. We're saved by grace, undeserved mercy of God. That's how we're saved. Not by what we do, but why, by what Christ has done for us. The second heresy is, so that the first heresy is, you get saved by, by what you do. You, no, you're saved by what Christ has done for you at the cross. Right? That's the door that gets you into heaven, is Jesus. But the other heresy is, some will say, well, because I believe in Jesus, I'm saved, I can do what I want. I can live the way I want. And now that's a heresy. Once, you, once you're saved, once you believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, as my Lord and Saviour, that means you're saved. Okay? But once you're saved, you've got to live a life for God. You've got to live obediently to God. You can't say, I'm saved, but I can do what I want. You can't say that. That's heresy. It says, for we... It says, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Here it is, to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2.10 So we've been saved for a purpose, to do good works. So when you believed in Jesus Christ, you then called to serve him and do good works for him. James chapter 2 verse 19 says, you believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. So it's not just enough to believe and say, I believe in Jesus, I'm saved. Because even the demons believe in Jesus, but the demons. Believing in Jesus saves you. Believing in Jesus dying on the cross saves you. But you've got to do good works. So first of all, God has created you for good works. He's created you for good works. You know, there's a statue by um, Michelangelo, Michelangelo, and it's the statue of David. It's in Italy. I think it's in Florence, and it's a, a beautiful statue. Why did Michelangelo make it? He made the statue for a purpose. But he chiseled it. And he and he and he knocked he knocked the rock and, and he chiseled away at the rock to get this beautiful marbled statue. And God is doing the same in your life, he's chiseling you and knocking bits off you and he wants to make you into something beautiful. And part of that is for you to do good works. Imagine you've got an old train and it's been broken down for forty years and it's just it's gone all rusty and everything. But then the government takes over the train track and finds this train and spends millions of dollars or millions of pounds redoing it and now it's painted beautiful and, it, and it's just back, to, not, back to, to its former glory but even better than it was when it was first made. And that's what God wants to do with you. He wants to take your old life, save you, but make it a better life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creature the old has gone the new has come God wants to give you a new life to make you a new creature so it's time if you've got saved it's time if you've become born again to put away your old life if you've been swearing in your old life you need to stop swearing now if you've been having sex outside of marriage before you were a Christian when you came to know Jesus, you need to put away that sexual lifestyle. If you were gay before you were a Christian, and you were involved in gay activity or lesbian activity, when you became a born again and believed in Jesus, you need to put away that sexual activity because it's not of God. If you were stealing before you became a Christian, you need to put it away and, be, and follow Jesus. You need to, if you was a, a drug addict or an alcoholic, and you believed in Jesus, you need to put away the old lifestyle. Okay? You're a new creature now. You're saved by grace. The old has gone, the new has come, and you've got to get it into your mind that you're no longer the old person.
You're a new person. The way to break your sin, the way to break your old habits is to do this, is to come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is everything to you and that your life is nothing. That all that matters is Jesus. Once you get to that point, you are saved and every old habit in your life will begin to break. I promise you. But you've got to get to that point where Jesus is everything and you become nothing. That your happiness doesn't ma matter. That what you want doesn't matter. What matters is Jesus and his happiness and his glory. Then your old habits will break. You're saved by grace and the, and the old habits will break. If you are full of bitterness, it needs to go. If you are full of hatred, it needs to go. If you were uh, a violent person, it needs to go. It all needs to go. When you came to know Jesus, the old has got to go, the new has come. Colossians 3, verse 9 and 10. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self, which is its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator, Colossians 3, 9, 10. God has saved you and he's renewing you now and he's making you into his image. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, 20. So your whole life has gone. Every day you need to say, God, this day is your day. I want to do what you want me to do. And every day is presented to God as a gift to say, Lord, here's my day, what do you want me to do? Here's my hands, here's my feet, here's my body, here's my mind, here's my money, here's everything in my life. It's yours, God, what do you want me to do? So that's how you got to live now. you got to live all for Jesus and give everything to him each day. Don't hold anything back. A lot of people hold something back. They give Jesus part but they want to hold on to the whole old sex life or the old drug life. They want to hold on to something. And Satan says, oh, God won't mind. It's not that bad. You're not really being that bad. And you do need it. And, and Satan tries to hoodwink you and tries to trick you. But no, you've got to... Everything has to be for Jesus. Every bit that is clouding your relationship with God has to go. It has to go. Jesus has got to be everything. It says, I, you say, but I can't do that. It seems too strict, too hard. It says, I can do everything through him who, who gives me strength. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. God will give you strength. Now the strength comes when you come to an end in yourself and you say, I can't do this. I'm saved by grace, but I can't change. Then God will change you. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will, Romans 12, 1 and 2. You've got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to put off the old self the old ways. A lot of people, a lot of Christians are involved in sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is rife. You've got to put it away. You can't look upon porn. You can't get involved in porn. You can't get involved in relationships outside marriage. You can't get involved in anything that's sexually impure or see anything in sexually impure. You've got to turn away from it. You've got to turn to Christ and be dedicated 100% to Him. You've got to do that the way to do it is to come early on in your Christian life to an end in yourself. To realize that you are nothing, that your happiness is nothing, that everything is Jesus. All that matters is his glory. Once you get to that point, God will fill you with his strength. There will be a peace, a joy, and there won't be as much striving, and your old habits will break. But you've got to get to that point. Where Jesus is everything to you. A lot of problems come in the Christian life because people are hanging on to this world. They still want the things in this world and they get unhappy if they don't get these things in this world. And that's where the problems pastorally come. 
So young people, give your body to Jesus today. If someone grabbed you on the neck, tried to strangle you, what would you do? You'd push them off. If sexual sin's coming in your life, you've got to push it away. Push the temptation away. If, if anything's coming that's spoiling your relationship with God, you've got to push it away and get it out of your life. For by him and through him we, we were created for sorry for by him all things were created things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities all things were created by him and for him Colossians 1:17 you're saved for the purpose to live for him to live for Jesus so do you realize you're a new creature now you're a new person now. If you believed in Jesus, you're new now. You're a new person. A lot of people become Christians, but they don't realize what that means. And what it means is you're, you're, you're a new person. You're in a new sphere. You're in a new atmosphere, a new kingdom. You're in the kingdom of Satan. You're in the kingdom of self. You're in the kingdom of sin. But now you're in the kingdom of Christ. You're in the kingdom of deliverance. You're in the kingdom of power. You're in the kingdom of love. You're in the kingdom of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You realize you're in a new kingdom. Do you realize you're a new person? God is changing you. His Spirit's in you now. He's forgiven you and His Spirit's in you and His Holy Spirit's in you and you're a child of God now. But have you left your old life? Or have you become a Christian but you've fallen into temptation? Maybe you've gone to see some old friends maybe they were drug addicts and you're a drug addict and you were a drug addict and you became a Christian and you go and seeing your old friends and they're tempting you or maybe you, you've seen someone in church and you've got to know this man or woman but you're in sexual sin and you're getting involved in sexual things now as a Christian and you shouldn't do you're a new creature you're a new child of God so walk as a child of God be holy be holy how do you be holy make Jesus everything Come to an end in yourself and make Jesus all in all. And say, Lord, I can't change. I can't live for you. I can't do it in myself. I come to your end in yourself. And when you come to an end in yourself and you realize that all that matters is Jesus, you will then begin to break your old habits and you'll begin to have a joy and you'll begin to get victory in your life because you're completely dead. And Jesus has been resurrected in you. How do you break your habit? By making Jesus all. How do you break your habit? By coming to an end in yourself and saying, Lord, I need your help. Fill me. How do you do that? By seeing that this life is short. That one day you're going to die and be with Jesus. That all the joy that you want today, whatever it is, a good job, a wife or husband or kids, all that will pass away, but Jesus will remain. So you've got to start living for Jesus now. You've got to start making Jesus all now. That's how you beat your old sin. You realize that death is certain, that death is coming, and death will snatch you away. And the only way to deal with death is Jesus. And the only way to get to heaven is Jesus. And so it's about Jesus and becoming infatuated and passionate about Jesus. That's the way to beat your sin in your life. And so many Christians get bogged down in sins and get bogged down in failure because it comes down to this. Jesus has not become everything to them. They still got one foot in the kingdom of Christ and one foot in the kingdom of the world and they still want the things of the world rather than the things of God. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and, and Lot and his wife came out of Sodom and Gomorrah, that city of iniquity, that den of iniquity. And Lot went on and he had his face set to the flint to God but Lot's wife turned back turned and looked at the city and she turned to salt. Why? Because she still loved the things of the world. She still wanted things of the world. And the reason why if you've been born again and you've become a Christian, you're not getting victory in your life is you're like Lot's wife. You're still looking back to the world. You still want the things of the world. 
And if you look to the world, you'll turn into salt. You'll turn into nothing. You'll turn into something that will not be of God. And so many people, Christians, are like that. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to strengthen you. I'm here to strengthen you in the power of Christ. I'm here to lead you onto Zion. And I'm doing it through the word of God. And I'm trying to encourage you and help you and give you victory in your sin. And you get victory by stop looking at the world and what the world has. So many people say, I want a wife, I want a husband, I want a house, I want a job, I want this, I want that. And you get tired and discouraged and you fall into sin and temptation. Much of it comes because you don't believe in God. Because you don't believe His promises. Because you don't believe in, in, that God has it all planned for you. That God is there for you and God is going to be with you. And God loves you. And though you might have a deficiency in some area of your life and it gets you down, God is still with you. And you've got to make God everything. You've got to make Jesus everything. When you do that, boom, your sin will be broken. The power of sin will be broken in your life. And you will have victory. And it will not be hard. The reason why it is hard for you is because you are not Fallen into the arms of the Lord and rested in Him and Him alone. And take your eyes off the world and what the world has. And feast your eyes upon Christ. Number two, God has called you to good works. We looked at God has created you for good works. You've been created for good works. God has called you to good works. Let's imagine you get a, a job working in a factory, just getting the, uh, the tins and putting them in boxes, and, and you've got this job and you're working there, but all day and every day you find a little corner and you go to sleep, and you don't work there, you don't do anything. You, your job is in that factory. Your job is to do that particular work. When God called you, He's got a factory. It's this world. And He's got a job for you to do. Ephesians 4.10 Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. He saved you for good works. So you can't say to God, I'm a Christian now, but I'll do what I want to do. I want to get a career. I want to do this. I want to do that. I, I want to live this way. I want to live that way. You no. Know, you, you should say, I want to do what God wants me to do. If God wants you to be a top businessman, he'll, if that's what God wants you to do, then you do it for God and His glory. If God wants you to be a sweeper in a school, and that's what God wants you to do, you do it for His glory. If God has called you to be a father, then you do it for his glory. If God has called you to be single, you do it for his glory. If God has called you to help the homeless, you do it for his glory. But God has got things for you to do. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good. Titus chapter 2 verse 14 they are eager to do what is good when you get saved you've got to be eager to do what God wants you to do John 15 8 this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples God wants you to bear fruit in your life what's the point of having an apple tree with no apples what's the point of having a pear tree with no pears What's the point of having a coconut tree with no coconuts? What's the point of a Christian without any fruit? God wants you to bear fruit. Now I've got a whole list of texts here. And you can study these as a Bible study. So I'm going to go through them quickly. And uh, you can take these texts and do a Bible study on this on your own. Okay? John James chapter 1 verse 18 and 19. 
the work of listen and watch what you say and put away anger James chapter 120 get rid of filth of filth and study God's word James 122 be a doer of the word James 126 bridle the tongue James 127 visit the sick James chapter 2 verse 8 don't show favoritism James chapter 3 14 and 15 16 verse 17 and 18 don't be bitter and don't be ambitious and be a peacemaker James chapter 4 verse 10 be humble James chapter 5 verse 1 uh, the rich be low 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13 be sober minded 1 Peter chapter 1 14 don't follow evil but be holy 1 Peter chapter 1 22 obey in truth and love 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 get rid of envy uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 remember you're a royal priesthood and don't lust 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 13 respect government 1 Peter chapter 4 7 be sober 1 Peter chapter 5 2 feed the flock 1 Peter 5 5 be submission and then 1 John chapter 1 verse 6 don't walk in darkness 1 John chapter 2 verse 5 obey the word 1 John chapter 2 verse 11 don't don't hate 1 John chapter 2 verse 13 love not the world 1 John chapter 2 28 abide in Christ 1 John 3 6 don't keep sinning 1 John 3 14 love 1 John 3 17 um, be carefree with your possessions uh, 1 John 3 27 love 1 John 4 7 love 1 John 4 11 love 1 John 4 20 don't hate 1 John 5 3 obey the, word, the, the commands and you can do the study there but <coughs> the point is that, that there's a lot of things that God wants you to do in your life and you can't opt out of it as a Christian you know there might be someone in your family that you do not love or someone in the church you do not love or someone in your neighborhood you do not love because they've not been nice to you you can't opt out as a Christian and say I'm a Christian but I don't have to love that person no you're a Christian and you have to love okay and then you might say well I'm quite proud in some areas and I don't like being submissive I'm a Christian but I'm not going to submit to people to the government or to to leaders in the local church or whatever you, you can't opt out you can't say I'm a Christian but I opt out of that say no God says I've got to respect my pastor God says I've got to respect my elders and I have to respect them God says I've got to respect the government I gotta respect it even though the government just seems to be crazy. God says we gotta walk in sexual purity. You can't say I'm a Christian but hey I, I like this woman or I like this man and uh, we're not married but we're gonna in indulge in sexual sin and it's gonna be okay. You can't say that. That's not for you to say. That's not biblical Christianity. That's you not God you can't opt out you can't say I'm a Christian and do that or you say I'm a Christian but I, I, I was a drug addict before and I like drugs and I'm still going to take my crack cocaine or I smoke some marijuana there's no harm in it no you got to stop you can't opt out but you say well I'm a Christian but I can still be gay I can still live a gay lifestyle I can still have gay thoughts I can still get involved in gay sex you can't you can't opt out the Bible teaches marriage between a man and a woman and if you're going to be faithful to buy the for, to God and to his word then you've got to obey and you can't opt out and say I'm born again but I can do it my way you can't you got to do it God's way you got to live for God and his way and too many in the church folks too many people who say they're born again and too many Christians too many people in the church are doing it their way and not God's way and we've got to clean up the church we've got to clean up our own lives and we've got to clean up the church and you've got to clean up your life now what needs cleaning up in your life be honest 
Don't start getting angry with me. Don't start getting defensive. Don't start saying, Jay, don't you dare tell me this and don't you dare tell me that. I'm not interested in that. You be honest. You be honest and upfront and and face the fact that you're living in sin as a Christian. That you became born again and God put his hand on you. But for some reason you're walking in the way of sin. You said, Jay, I'm in pain. I've got a, I've got I I I, I do sin because of com I need comfort or I do this or or I do that because I struggle. I understand that. I understand you struggle. God knows you struggle. But it's time it got dealt with. It's time you dealt with that sin. It's time you dealt with it. It's time you faced up to it. It's time you owned up to it. It's time you be honest about it. It's time you realize that this sin has got to be dealt with. And I've told you how to deal with that sin. The way to deal with the sin is to realize you're going to die. You're going to go to heaven or hell. And that Jesus died for you. And that Jesus is everything. And stop looking at the world and what the world has. And start looking to Christ. And I promise you, if you get to that point where you stop looking at the world and what the world has, and moaning about your own lot, and start looking to Christ and make Him everything, I promise you, you will have a drastic change. There will be a tsunami of grace and joy and peace and victory in your life. And you'll live in victory. And not defeat after defeat after defeat after defeat after defeat after defeat. Year upon year upon year upon year, week upon week upon week upon week, day upon day upon day upon day, the day you turn your eyes from the world and turn your eyes upon Christ and make Him everything is the day all those days of defeat will stop and it will be a day of victory. And every day will be a day of victory. You might have your struggles, you might fail, you might make mistakes. But well, every day will be a day of victory because you are going in the right direction with the right motives and the right power. Hallelujah. I've laboured it, folks, because we need to be honest. It's hard, I know. It's painful when someone confronts you. But as a doctor who is a cancer, you've got a cancer patient and as a doctor, if I was a doctor and I had a cancer patient and I was afraid to tell them that they got cancer to go away and their, their, their lives would be ruined but as a doctor I've got to say you got cancer and we've got to cut it out and I've just laboured this issue because I'm just saying we've got spiritual cancer and we've got to cut it out it's hard and it's, it's brutal but we've got to do the work. We've got to, we want a real work. We want a real work of God in our lives. And it's brutal sometimes. But we've got to do it. And if you come through the pain barrier with me. And listen to what I'm saying. You're going to get blessing. And you're going to go forward. You're going to be victorious. Third point. <clears throat> God has planned your good works. He said, Jay, I've got no future, mate. It's all right you're saying, I've got to put Jesus first, I'm not going to look to the world, but at the end of the day, day, Jay, I'm facing a bleak future. And I have been doing for some time. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. God has prepared in advance for us to do. You have a life that has been prepared by God in advance for good works for you to do. Isn't that amazing? James Montgomery Boyce was dying of cancer. He was a famous American preacher. He had only a few weeks to live. And he rushed about trying to get all things done before he died. 
Then it came for him to die. And he had not done all that he needed to do. But this is what he said. He was satisfied and this is what he said. My work is now finished. I have done all I can. And therefore all that God intended for me to do in this life. God's got everything in your life planned. And as you walk in his plan. All that he intended you to do. You will do. And you will be satisfied in that plan. God's got a plan. For you. All the good deeds he wants you to do. Your career or whatever it, it is. He has it all mapped out for you. In Manchester, many years ago, near Piccadilly Station, was a, a lot of old houses, back-to-back -back houses. In England, uh, they like sort of all stuck together, row upon row. And there were these old houses, and it was before the railway station was there. And there was a guy who had a, 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 a issued a command. He was in charge of building this railway, and he ordered all the houses to be knocked down. And when people were knocking it down, they just thought, it, "This is a mess. This is crazy." But then, as they build, as they built the railway station the man who was in charge had a plan and he knew what the plan was and as they built the railway station it was built and it was a great railway station fit to be used by millions of people today and in your life things have been knocked down and you you kind of think everything's a mess God's in control and he has the plan and you might see the rubble of your life and think I can't see a future God's got the plan and as you walk in the plan he's going to build and build and build in your life where you're going to have usefulness and purposefulness in your life but you've got to trust that God has that plan Ephesians 1 4 for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. This plan was before you were even born. He had this plan for you. Every Christian should be seeking to serve the Lord in accordance with his gifts and desires in every situation of life. God has given you talents and gifts. And you've got to ask him, Lord, how can I use these talents and gifts that you've given me for your glory? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 For we are God's workmanship with God prepared in advance which God prepared in advance for us to do. Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones there is no value in a profession of Christianity unless it is accomplished by a desire to be like Christ, a desire to be rid of sin, a desire after positive holiness. Are you going to do that? If you've got saved, are you going to live for Jesus now? Are you going to do it? Do it. Do it. Say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to live for him. I'm going to really, really live for him. Do it. It's the only life worth living. Matthew 7.21 Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many my miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Matthew 7.21 There are millions of people today in the church who are professing to be Christians but they are living as demons they are living 
lives just like the world and they are no different from the world many many people are deluded and they think they're Christian you don't be the, one of those deluded ones don't be deluded if you're not living all for Jesus then you need to seriously doubt your salvation if you're not living for the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart you might fail and make mistakes but you honestly are living all for him if you're not doing that yet you claim to be born again you're you're deluded and you need to seriously be honest with yourself and get right with God and get living for Jesus okay thank you for listening let's come before the Lord Lord strong words but words needed Lord but I pray that it would be an encouragement to I pray that all of us would be blessed by these words and encouraged and strengthened and Father especially those who are are deluded may they just know that you forgive them if they repent and that you would restore and strengthen them but those who feel there's no future that they haven't got any hope I pray that they would have hope today and know that you have a plan for them and you're going to bless them and guide them and that out of the ashes of their life you will build new new things in their life and it will be a new day of joy for them so Lord I pray that you would bless and you would encourage you would minister to them and help them and show them your grace and show them your love and show them your care Lord I ask this Father in your name and for your glory Amen Amen hope that message is a blessing to you and uh, pray continue to encourage you in the Lord take care now God bless <laughs>